Merry Christmas, everybody. Praise God. We're Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you today. Thank you, Lord. We are so grateful to you. Oh, Lord God. We're so grateful that you sent Jesus and he was born into this earth. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. We're so, oh, well, we're just so. <laughs> Hallelujah. We open our hearts and our minds to, to hear from heaven today. Words that move heaven on the earth. And all of us in the radio and television audience and all of us here in the studio, we so we are so, so blessed. Thank you, Lord. To be born of you, sir. And we thank you for sending Jesus to take care of all of it for us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Welcome everybody to the broadcast today. Praise the Lord. And of course, we're going to be talking about Christmas all week, which comes up this following Wednesday. And there's something about... Did you go shop yet? Absolutely. Are you kidding? Okay. Well, go ahead. Then. I stay ready, girl. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just wanted to be sure. Yes. Amen. <clears throat> Let's open our Bibles to the book of Isaiah. All right, Brother Coley, you gonna be talking about Christmas from Isaiah? Oh yeah, because most Christian people don't understand uh, because of not understanding the word Christ, and don't have have a clue uh, of what was happening. Now, there's one thing I want to take care of this right now. Well. We don't celebrate Christmas with a tree because it's a pagan holiday. Not anymore, it's not dumb dumb. <laughs> we took it away from the pa pagans hundreds of years ago. <laughs> Get over it. All right, come on, dear Lord. Bless your darling heart. <laughs> what was it Brother Hagin used to say? Bless your darling heart and stupid head. <laughs> forgive me, forgive me, dummy. Oh, I, I, I forgive me. <laughs> Now, I can tell I'm going to have to talk to you to behave. Okay. <laughs> it's Christmas after all. Yeah, after all. Okay. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27. And it shall come to pass in that day that his, the devil's, burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Now let's go to the New Testament in Luke chapter 4. And the 18th verse, Jesus is preaching in his hometown in Nazareth. And he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now get this. Because he has anointed me. He has anointed me. Amen. This is key to Christmas. This is key to being a Christian, a Christian. All right. He has anointed me to preach. Now, most people don't even know Jesus was a preacher. The idea, the traditional idea, and uh, Gloria and I never thought this. I mean, we, we didn't come out of church. Somebody asked me one time, so what's your background? I said, sinner. <laughs> you know, I, I went to church as a little boy and got out of it as quick as I could and I had a drug problem. My mama drugged me to church <laughs> and she had to drag me to because I thought it was the most boring thing I ever got into in my life. And back in those days in that church, I think he would have agreed. I don't know, but, but I won't go there. I mean, after all, you know, that was 75 years ago, they'll get over it. Anyway. Where are you? Right here. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, don't, don't go away. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> it's Christmas. Luke chapter four. Okay, I got it. And um, now, where was it? Now, the word, as all of you in this room know, but it's 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 always very important to go back over it again, because if you even forget it when you're reading the Bible, even though you know it, the word. Christ is the Greek word that translates the Hebrew word Messiah. Now, I have no idea why the English translators didn't translate it. I don't know. But most people have the idea that, that Jesus came and he healed all the time and healed everybody. And the reason he did that was to prove his divinity, which is a traditional lie. In the first place, he didn't heal everybody. In his own town, he said he healed all manner of sickness and disease. And there were times in certain places where he healed everybody. But he healed all manner of disease. There was not one and one existing disease that he did not heal. Amen. And in Nazareth, <laughs> there, Mark chapter six, there he could do not he wouldn't he could not do any marvelous works, save he laid his hands on a few sick people. And in the, in the Greek, it's people with sickly people. It's people with minor ailments. And just, just a handful got healed. And there wasn't much wrong with them. Now, and, and think about it. If that had been his purpose, to prove that he was divine, well, he really blew it in Nazareth. He got run out of town. <laughs> they wanted to kill him. He had to spiritually hide himself so they couldn't find him and he walked out from the midst of them mm. to keep them from shoving him off that cliff. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So, and, but, but what I'm saying is that this is, it's, it's biblical knowledge, but a whole lot of Christians just carry their Bibles around with them. Take them to church and read whatever the pastor says, close it and never think about it again all week long. A whole, whole lot of people are in that condition. Now, at Christmas time, a whole lot of people never even open their Bibles. Maybe the Sunday school book. Are, are, you, are you listening to me? Yeah. So, not having this kind of knowledge. The word Messiah, and you will find it in the book of John, where it is interpreted. And I'm... I'm should have looked it up before I got in here. That's what I was, just before we went on camera, I was looking for that hurriedly. But uh, anyway, it actually says and uses the word translated Messiah in the book of John. It's the only reference to him as in that manner. Hmm. So he, his, he's Jesus, the anointed one because that's what Messiah means, the anointed, anointed of God. Amen. So now, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives. He had to preach under that anointing. Now, without the anointing, Jesus is just as helpless as any other man when it came uh, to doing signs and wonders. And in fact, just flip right over there to the 14th chapter of John. Or if you want to, I'll just read it to you because I'm just going to look at one scripture. 
Verse 10, Believest thou not that I'm in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he does the work. Jesus never claimed to heal anybody. It's the Father, the Spirit. And then you come uh, in the 12th verse, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also in greater works than these, because I go to my Father. Well, what was he talking about? If you just finished reading that, he's going to the Father. And after the cross, he's sending the Holy Spirit, the Father to dwell in us, to anoint us. Glory to God. Jesus on earth was the example son. Bill Winston calls him the sample. (laughs) Oh, glory to God. See, a a sample, you can act like him and you can taste of him. (laughs) You get a little taste of, oh yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, Acts 10, 38. Let's, Let's go over there and look at that, please. Peter, this is 10 years after the day of Pentecost, and Jesus, Peter is referring to what Jesus preached. He preached recovery of sight to the blind. He preached the deliverance of captives. He preached uh, the the deliverance to heal the brokenhearted and then set at liberty those that are bruised and preach the acceptable year of the Lord, which is the great Jubilee, and that's supernatural debt cancellation. The anointing. Huh? Now, Peter is referring to that in Cornelius' house because they're just now finding out that the Gentiles can be born again and be baptized in the Holy Spirit. But then it's a totally Jewish church. Verse 34, Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted of him. That word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace, by Jesus Christ, that word which God sent by Jesus Christ preaching. You get that? I like that, don't you? He's Lord of all, Jesus Christ. Jesus, the anointed one. Jesus, Messiah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus, the anointed. He is Lord of all. That word, that message, I say, you know, which was published throughout all Judea, how Jesus preached it all throughout Judea. And then they went and preached it throughout all Judea. And began from Galilee after the baptism with John preached. It began in Galilee after the baptism that John preached because that's when he he baptized Jesus in water and then God baptized him in the Holy Ghost. He actually saw the Holy Spirit come on him. Now, it's good that the Holy Spirit, it says, like a dove. It's good, you know, to to use the dove, but he didn't look like a dove. He landed on him like a dove. Amen. All right. How God anointed, this is what he preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to Jesus. Amen. Now then, let's go to the book of Matthew chapter one. Thank you, Jesus. No, I'm not done talking. Well, go ahead and turn there. But I'm not done quite yet talking about the uh, the anointing. When you and I were born again, according 
to the second chapter of 1 John. We received anointing from him. And in 1 John, they, they chose to use the word unction. But it's, it's the same word. In fact, that's what it is in, in Spanish. So it's, it, it's anointing. It is the anointing to live. Glory to God. You got born again? He's in there. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. The fruit of the Spirit is in there. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, he's in there forever. Ah, but boys and girls, let me tell you something. When you got baptized with the Holy Spirit, when Jesus baptized you, oh, that's when the Spirit of God came on you for service. That's what he said. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now, Jesus had the Spirit of God in him when he was born of Mary. Amen. He's just as much the son of God when he's 29 as he was when he was 30. But see, he's born in a day when, according to Levitical law and teaching, the Levite did not go into service of the temple till he was 30. And then he retired from service of the temple when he was 50. Now, he didn't quit working. He didn't quite retire and just, you know, just sleep around a while. No, no, he had to go to work in the fields and, and supply and help supply the temple. He didn't lose status. But, it, but that was, listen, work in that temple was, was extremely hard. It was night and day all the time. And, and, and God just didn't lay that on anybody. It, it, just, it, was, it was really too much for somebody over that length of time. Anyway, well, Jesus stepped into that service when he was 30. And I was 30 when I walked into the will of God. And I didn't, I didn't even know that <laughs> back then. But I can see how the Lord patterned my life like that. And, uh, and it, it bled. Now, it, I didn't have to be a fool for 29 years before I got there, but <laughs> I was. But I, anyway, um, my point being, Jesus, here again, the example son, couldn't do anything without that anointing. That's right. Nothing. And never claimed to do anything. When you take a synopsis of what he said, particularly in the Gospel of John, he said, I only say mm -hmm. what I hear my father say. I only do what I see my father do. Why? The anointing. Yeah. And he is still a man. Mm -hmm. He got born again. This is another thing that almost 100% of Christians do not know. Because they get mad when you say the, that he went to hell. If he didn't go to hell, we're doomed. Right. Amen. Amen. He's the first man ever went to hell and got out. Amen. And the last one ever went to hell and got out. Amen. And kept us from going. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. But he suffered in hell what no man has ever suffered and never will. Anyway, that when he was born again, he's the first born from the dead. Ow! He was manifested in the flesh in Bethlehem, made alive in the spirit in the pit of hell. And defeat, one man defeated, the devil defeated all of hell, praise God. I mean, he finished them off right there. One born again, Holy Ghost baptized human being. Yeah, glory to God. Now that's what we celebrate at his birth. Do you hear me? Amen. That's why we shout that he was born. Yeehaw. Woo. Praise God. Amen. That's what the shouting is all about. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Christmas. Christ Mass. Mass 
is celebration. If you're Catholic, you know that. Protestants, which is not in, anymore because that's been settled. You didn't know that? Oh, uh, the Lutheran Vatican Council, 1994 to 1999. How many didn't know that? Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, and, and they settled it in 1999 in Luther's favor. All the indulgences are gone. It, it looks like we wrote that thing. Google it and, and, and read it for yourself. That uh, it says there is no salvation other, no justification, righteousness. There is no justification outside of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and in His, in his grace and in His blood. Yes. All the indulgences are gone, all, all of that. So there's no opposition anymore. Amen. There's no protest anymore. We're not Protestants anymore. <laughs> well, we never were. We weren't protesting against anybody, but, but the, the fuss is over. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's the reason I have the privilege of having such a strong ministry among Catholics. I, it, it's, it's part of my thrill. And anyway, in the book of my how much time do I have, Tim? Yeah, pray. Whoa, one minute? What's the matter with you? <laughs> Tim's hungry. Tim's hungry. Oh, good. Anyway, let, let's, let's, we can begin here in the 18th verse. The birth of Jesus the anointed was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make a public example, was minded to put her way privately. Now, a just man, a righteous man, will not make a public example of his wife. And they're, they're born again Christian men that put their wife down all the time and go out to eat with somebody. Not and just, yeah, put her down all the time. Just play it around, put her down. That is not right. Praise God. Amen. And we're out of time. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.